Hi, so today we're going to talk about quarter inch feet and the various ones we carry here at the featherweight shop, as well as our seam guide. We thought it might help clear up a little bit of confusion and make it easier for you to decide which one would be best suited for your piecing style. This first one I'm showing you is the scant quarter inch foot. This is the one of the ones we carry. It is our most popular actually. And it's most noted for its uh, black guide, or I guess I could say uh, this guide that's on the side, because sometimes it's black, sometimes it's chrome. And then it also has these little red lines, which are nice for coming upon a cross seam if you need to align it more easily. So once again, it does have this little guide, and it kind of acts like a little fence with which to keep your fabric um, up against when you're doing your quarter inch seam. And again, this is the scant quarter inch foot. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the machine and I'll show you how I do that. You're going to bring it up to your presser bar. And then you want to kind of push it up, up as high as it'll go up against that screw and then screw it down very tightly. If you find that you can't get it very tight, we do carry um, thumb screws that have a little groove on this side right here that you can use your screwdriver to tighten down um, even more tight if you need to. So let's go ahead and get started. I have this little piece of fabric here as more of a uh, sh to help with shadows when I go to help show you how it measures. So um, we'll just use that in a little bit. But this is two pieces of fabric and I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch of a quarter inch seam and I'm gonna show you how this one measures. Okay, so one tip I'm going to share with you, um, and it actually is very helpful, especially with the Singer Featherweight and other vintage singers. If you um, lower your needle first before you lower your presser foot, it'll actually lock your thread in place and prevent the thread from coming unthreaded from the needle, which seemed to always happen to me before. It'll also prevent thread jams from um, starting at the very beginning of a, of a seam. Um, you still want to hold your thread tails just as an extra precaution, um, but this is a tip I learned from a professional seamstress, actually. And so you want to lower your needle first, then lower your presser foot. Okay, so I'm going to hold my thread tails, and we'll go ahead and start sewing so you can see how this foot works. And you can see I'm just kind of guiding it along this little guide here. And this is the scant quarter inch foot. So let me stitch off there. Get that out and then we'll measure it here up against this fabric. This is what this was for. And we've got their featherweight shop creative grids ruler. It's kind of fun. And I'm going to put this line. I'm going to use these little dotted lines here. Right, right there. I'm going to, you can see that this, these little dotted lines, so that you can see the stitching there in between each one, is right on that stitching line. But yet the, the other lines, a quarter inch away, are actually right outside the fabric. That means that you have a scant quarter of an inch. It's one hair's width less than a quarter of an inch. And that helps so that when you go to press your seam over on the back side, when you're ironing and you press your seam to one side, that scant quarter of an inch accounts for this little bit of a fold right here so that your seam ends up actually being true once it's pressed. So that is the scant quarter of an inch foot. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. The next foot that we're going to demonstrate is the spring hinged quarter inch foot. It does have a little guide here on this side. You can see that there. It has a, a spring hinged here. So it's kind of like the original presser foot in that it hinges right there. Helps you to get over bulkier seams. It attaches to the presser bar like the original presser foot with these forks that wrap around versus going, you know, sliding up like the scant quarter inch foot that we just demonstrated. And this one doesn't have the, the cross lines, but it has this skinny little toe here. So you can eyeball your seam 
you know, keep the fabric kind of up against this edge, but then you've got this, this guide kind of as your stop back. So you're not using the guide with your eye so much as you are um, using this and your guide together. The guide is making sure that it stays there, but you're following it with your eye, because some people really like this skinny little toe. So we'll go ahead and attach this to the machine, and then we'll demonstrate how, how this one measures up. So like I said earlier, this one wraps around the presser bar. We'll screw that down tightly. And make sure my seams are aligned there. I'm kind of getting my thread hard to see with it being so dark. Okay, so like we learned before, we're going to lower the presser foot or lower the needle first. Make sure it's kind of aligned up. Then we'll lower the presser foot. And I will hold the thread tails. And I'm going to kind of watch how it aligns with this edge and then it's going to get caught with that fence a little guide on the side this one is more of a true quarter of an inch so we'll see how this one measures up Use this as, to help with the shadowing. Okay, so my seam, I've got my ruler on my seam line, and then this line is actually, I know it's kind of hard to see in the, in the video, but this line is actually on the edge of the fabric, or it's actually splitting it. So it is a true quarter of an inch. Let's see if I can back that up to show you a little bit. Move that shadowing under there. There we go. See how if I move this over a little bit and then I just slowly back it off, it's still on the edge of that fabric. We'll do that again. I move it over so that it's and then just watch that right edge see how it's still on the fabric so this one is a true quarter of an inch and the spring hinged quarter inch foot okay so we'll move on to the next foot okay this next foot is our true quarter of an inch foot it does have a black guide on the side it also has a couple of the red cross lines, um, um, but it is a tr more of a true quarter of an inch seam, not a scant. And it does attach by sliding up from the top, or sliding up from the bottom. So we'll go ahead and attach it. Making sure it's good and tight. And then we will lower our needle first. And then lower the presser foot. And like I said, it does have this little guide over here. So we will follow the fabric along with that guide. Some people ask me about thread, which I like to use. And I always recommend either a fit Orifil or Presencia. I really like that one too. Sometimes those threads do require a thread stand because of the cross wound spools. But we have video tutorials um, on our schoolhouse page for that as well. So be sure to catch those. Okay, let's see how this measures up. Again, this is the true quarter of an inch. And get our ruler. line up you can see the, 
the ruler marks there are dissecting that seam line and make sure I actually I'm going to move it so it's not on that number. There we go. There it is dissecting the seam line and then it's right dissecting the edge of the fabric there. So this one is a true quarter of an inch. Okay, so we will move on to the next foot that we have. Okay, so this next foot is the little foot. It's um, plastic or acrylic, I guess, would be a better description. And it does wrap around like the original presser foot. It has the red cross lines for um, aligning your cross seams. Um, we will go ahead and attach this one. Oops. The little foot is a scant quarter of an inch. Many quilters love this foot. It is quite popular. It's clear so you can see your work, but it has um, nice coverage um, keeping the, the work pressed as you're sewing. And we will go ahead and align our fabric to it. Now you'll notice there's no guide here on the side, but you are going to align your fabric to this right edge or the right toe. So we will lower our needle first like we learned. Then lower the presser foot and I'm going to keep my eye on the edge of this foot to make sure that my fabric stays aligned. I'm going to hold my thread tails. This um, is also a nice foot for paper piecing because you can see your work. And we'll measure this one here. I'll show you that it's more of a scant measurement. Kind of get tangled with the threads, don't we? Okay, so I've got my seam on the thread, or the ruler lines on the seam, and this fabric is just barely inside this line. So this is a scant quarter of an inch, and that is the little foot that we carry. It's a little more expensive, but lots of quilters like this one as well. Okay, moving on to the next foot. Okay, this next foot is called the patchwork quarter inch foot. It is more of a true quarter of an inch. It has some marks here for cross seams. It also comes with this guide, this guide bar, but I find that I don't use that very much. You can use it if you want to, if you wanted to sew some decorative stitching lines that were um, uh, equidistant to one another or as some people call channel quilting. This isn't really a quilting foot um, but you could use it if I guess if it was a small quilted project so you didn't have too much shifting. Um, but it does come with this handy guide if you want to use that. But I tend to take mine out and I use it just with the foot or just the foot by itself. And again this one has um, where you slide up from the side so we will slide this up and attach it good and securely. And again, this is a true quarter inch foot, but it's called the patchwork quarter inch foot. It's nice because it has um, a lot of uh, surface area that the, is covering the fabric, so it lays you know, nice and flat as you're sewing. So if you like a true quarter of an inch, this might be the one that you would like. You're going to be using the this edge right here as your guide, this right toe. This right here is a 3 8 so if you needed a 3 8 inch guide, you've got that too. But this is a true quarter of an inch guide right there. So we will lower our presser foot, or <laughs> the needle, I keep getting that backwards. Lower the needle, then we'll lower the presser foot, and I will watch my fabric here as it goes up against this right edge. Thank you. 
and we will go ahead and measure this. Get these threads out of the way. Okay. I have got my ruler lines on that seam line and I'm, I'll move it just a hair so you can see they both end up dissecting. The ruler line dissects the seam line and the ruler line dissects the edge of the fabric. So this is a true quarter of an inch foot. And we'll move on to the next foot. Our next most popular foot is the open toe quarter inch foot. And it is one I really like to use because of half square triangles. It's unique in the fact that it is a scant quarter of an inch from this edge to the center hole and from this edge to the center hole. So I can draw my line from point to point on my, on my, tri on my square and then I can sew on either side and get a scant quarter of an inch. It's also nice for paper piecing because of this open area. You can really see what your work is, um, where, where you're sewing with um, the paper piecing lines. And then if you're going to use this foot, if you'd like, um, you can for just regular piecing because it is a scant quarter of an inch on this side. So um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that just so we can see how this one measures because that is one of the most um, important features of any quarter inch foot um, based on your piecing style. So while it can be used for half square triangles or paper piecing, we will go ahead and test it with a quarter inch seam so you can see how it measures. So it attaches just like the uh, other feet that we've demonstrated. It slides up this bar. And get it on good and securely. And I'm going to use this right edge to get my scant quarter inch. Lower my needle first, then lower my presser, far, presser foot. Hold my thread tails. this one too. Now sometimes when you get to the edge of a seam like I just did, if you find that it kind of wants to pull into the center of the foot, it's just because there's that open space, you can use a stiletto, stiletto or pin to just kind of guide it there. Okay, let's see how this one measures up. Okay, scant quarter of an inch. My ruler lines are on that seam, and the next quarter of an inch ruler lines are a hair's width outside the fabric, making it a scant quarter of an inch. Some of you wonder, well, what kind of quarter inch foot or um, what kind of guide is best to use? or which quarter inch foot is best. Well, as you've seen from the various feet that we've just demonstrated, it really is a matter of preference for how they measure, or if some people like the guide on the side, some people don't. So hopefully that will help you, help you decide which will be best suited for your piecing. The other option, um, and we have many quilters who um, have emailed us or made comments that this is their favorite guide. Um, we um, had this made and it is acrylic, it had, comes with a thumb screw, I'll show you here, and a little washer. And you can use a metal seam guide. There are some ori vintage original seam guides that Singer made, um, but the difference with those is, and it happened to me actually, 
when you screw it down to the bed of the machine, it can chip away um, at your machine's finish. So we had this guy develop. It is acrylic, so it will um, protect the surface of your machine. It also allows you um, to measure anywhere from a scant, or even you could do an eighth here if you wanted, um, all the way out to about an inch. So um, you could go a little bit further if you screwed your, your thumb screw in this hole over here. Um, I'm demonstrating on my 222, but you, it's same. the holes are the same for a 221. Um, this seam guide will work on any um, vintage Singer sewing machine. Um, it, like I said, it will protect the surface of your machine, but the, the nice thing about this one is that it's um, 3 16 of an inch, so it's a lot thicker than a lot of the acrylic seam guides that we've seen. So it gives you a nice edge to sew um, your seam up against. You use the original presser foot with this particular guide. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the presser foot on. And I give a, another tutorial on the actual seam guide page, but I'm just gonna show you this on this video just so that you could see the different um, uh, variations you can do with for getting a quarter inch. I like to lower my needle and then I take my quarter of an inch and I move it over just a hair because I like a scant. And then I butt, slide this over so that it's right up against, butt up, butted up against the edge of that ruler. And then I screw this down tightly. And now I am set to go for my quarter inch seams. Now, there, sometimes it depends on your machine. This, this little plate will stick up about oh, 30 seconds of an inch or whatever, and so there might be a little gap here, so just make sure your fabric doesn't slip under there. Or we do supply a card that you can slip underneath this that kind of shims it up just a hair, just enough to get that so that there's no gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a sample here. Okay, so we're gonna do this sample. You'll notice that I put pins in this one so you could see that using pins with the seam guide is actually pretty easy. And like I said, there's another video tutorial where I kind of go into more detail because um, some, some of us do like to pin to make sure that we're getting those seams just perfectly aligned. Um, I am using these ultra fine glass head pins um, because it makes um, going over my seams and I can sew over them uh, very easily. Um, but we will go ahead and get started. Then I lower my presser foot. And you'll notice I pin from left to right so that my seam guide is not in the way. And you can see my fabric is just nicely butting up against that seam guide edge. And I measured this already because I know it's a scant quarter inch according to my ruler. So that kind of shows you a sampling of all the feet that we carry as well as our featherweight accurate seam guide. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email us through the website, and we'll be happy to help anytime.